Aha! In this lecture, I am going to cover one of the macronutrients, protein, and how do we calculate protein required for a patient that is in a hospital. So before we do that, let's go into different routes that are used for administration of nutrients. So the first one is called the intral nutrition. And basically intral nutrition, what it means is that it goes through the digestive system or the GI. In comparison to the second route, which is the parental nutrition, And in this route, it's basically the opposite of the first one. This one does not go through the digestive system. So if it doesn't go through the GI system, right, so how does it how does it go? So basically in this case, when it comes into parental nutrition, it's given through the intravenous route or IV route. And this is through the vein. So this is through a vein. So it basically goes directly to the blood. In comparison to this one, this one goes through the GI system and this one does not. And we always want to go moving from this route to this route all the time and from this route all the way to the oral route. And the reason for that, because we wanna utilize the GI system. We do not wanna keep the GI system not being used because some complication can arise if the GI system is left for longer period of time. So when it comes into protein, It's basically an essential part of calorie intake per day. And what protein does, it basically helps with repair and build muscle cells and this is the reason why many people who go to the gym they end up taking some source of protein with them and the reason for that because if someone for example is working really hard and end up causing some tissue damage to their muscle cells protein can help repair and build the new muscle cells and the calculation involved with protein is basically there are 4 kcal per 1 gram of protein. kcal can be used in a different way. So depending on the person, some people may say calories, some people may say kcal, which is the same exact thing. Depending on the person and how they're saying it, it's exactly the same thing. So don't, don't get confused if you hear someone saying calories and someone else saying kcal. It's the exact same thing. So what's the point of mentioning the intral route versus the parenteral route when it comes to protein? Well, in case of protein, there is really nothing of a difference. I just wanted you to know the different route. But when it comes to carbohydrate, and fat, which are the other two parts of micronutrients, the amount of calories or kcal 
for each one of them is different depending on the route. But when it comes to protein, it's the exact same thing. It's 4K cal per gram. And this number should be kept to memory when you are preparing for an exam or a test because it's not going to be provided to you. So here now we know this. What is the amount of protein required for a patient? And this will depend if the patient, so the amount of protein and this is daily will depend on if the patient is in the hospital or outside the hospital so if patient I'm gonna refer to patient as PT patient is out of a hospital The range for the amount of protein required on a daily basis is going to be, be between the range of 0.8 to 1 gram per kilogram per day. So this is the range for this patient. Now, if the patient is patient is in a hospital which mean if, it, if the patient is in a hospital that means their condition is more severe than this person over here so in this case the range it's going to be 1.2 to 2 gram per kilograms per day and now you notice, well, why is this higher than this? The reason for that, because these patients, they are catabolic. So this is the range over here. So these patients, they are catabolic. So what do I mean by that? Basically what it means is that these types of patients that are in the hospital, so they break down protein faster than those not in the hospital. And this is the reason why they require higher amount of protein on their daily basis. And one thing to keep in mind is that when we give protein through the intravenous route, it basically come with a solution. So if given via IV, then it comes with amino acid solution where in comparison to the enteral nutrition this one can come through a tubing so a solution that contain protein or some one of those protein uh, product can be given through a tubing system to the GI uh, that goes all the way to the GI system where here in parenteral nutrition it comes with an uh, amino acid solution that is given through a vein and one thing to keep also in mind is that you may see some healthcare provider preferring to use the ideal body weight when it comes to dosing of the amount of protein for a patient. So here we have kilograms, so it's gonna be ideal body weight, and this is going to be in kilogram. So now that I have gone over how to calculate protein and the two different routes, let's take an example to better understand how we can calculate the amount of calories and grams of protein for a patient. So in this example, we have JP, who is a patient, and he is 41 years old male, and he is in a hospital. 
So now, since he's in a hospital, we know the range. It's going to be 1.2 to 2 grams per kilogram per day. And he's in the hospital due to pneumonia. He is NPO, so this tells us one of those two routes is going to be used. NPO means he cannot take anything through the oral route. And his ideal body weight, so what I did in this example, just to make it easy, you may not have the ideal body weight in an exam, you may have actually the actual body weight. And in that case, you do need to convert to ideal body weight. And I have gone over a lecture that goes over the conversion between actual body weight to ideal body weight or to adjusted body weight. And I would include that lecture link in the description below. So we know the ideal body weight is 176 pound. So step number one is basically because we're looking for a kilogram, we need to convert this pound to kilogram. So we know patient is 176 pounds. And we know the conversion factor, there are, for one kilogram, there are 2.2 pounds. So pounds goes with pound, and we need to divide 176 over 2.2. Again, I picked this number just to make it easy. You may not have some easy number during an exam, and you may need to use a calculator. So in this case, 176 divided over 2.2, it's going to be 80 kilogram. So now we have the ideal body weight in kilogram. The question is asking, patient has an order for parenteral nutrition. This is really important. In this case, we have a protein. It doesn't make a difference when we're calculating the calories for this patient, but when it comes to carbohydrate or fat, it's going to make a difference because it, the number will be different if it's parenteral or enteral nutrition route. So here we have the physician or the provider is asking for 1.2 gram per kilogram ideal body weight per day requirement for a protein. And the question is asking, so what is the amount of grams required per a day basis for this patient and calories as well? So there are two pieces, total grams and calories. So let's calculate the total grams first. So the question, we already have the weight, which is 80 kilogram, and we know this is ideal body weight. And we have over here 1.2 gram per kilogram, and this is per day. So if I take kilogram with kilogram, I have 80 times 1.2. So 80 times 1.2, this is going to result in 96 grams of protein per day. So this is first part of the question. So this is answering the total grams. Now let's move into the second part. It's asking the number of calories for this patient and now going to the number that I already provided, which was 4 kcal per gram of protein. So we know this conversion factor over here, and we know we have 96, so basically multiplying by 96 grams per day. So grams go with, with gram, and then we have 4 times 96, and this is going to result in 384 kcal per day. And this is basically the second answer for this question. So this is the required grams per day, and this is the required per the order calories per day. So this is it for this lecture. If you have any question or comment, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching.